What's going on, everybody? You're tuned into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted, where we do a brand new episode every day documenting my journey as an independent musician. And of course, whenever I get the chance, I want to bring on dope guests to give you guys some insight. And we've got a very special guest today. Um, this is a guy who runs actually an agency with uh, his business partner, and they're ru they run an agency for musicians. And this is so this is going to be great. We're going to talk marketing i'm sure we'll talk paid ads i'm sure um so we've got my man Corey. uh if you guys have ever seen him he's been on brand man sean's youtube channel but he's got his own personal brand going on as well so Corey, thank you so much for tuning in man i'm 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 so excited to have you on yeah appreciate it man man it was a dope intro man like i was like yo man like this is, I, I haven't gotten like uh this is probably like my uh my best intro into a podcast so far I, for real yeah, yeah yeah that's hilarious I so, man. if i had to rank them like it, this is up there so far the int okay, well, we're off to do a good start. Like that's sick. <laughs> cool. Um, well, so like first off, like I just want to know for my own per personally, but for the people too, you know, how did you get started with all of this stuff? Like, what was it like for you growing up as a kid? What city did you grow up in? What was your life like? And how did you like progress into this? Uh, yeah, man. So right now I'm based out in Atlanta, and I've been in Atlanta for like the last, I would say, probably like four or five years or so. Uh, from like a small, you know what I'm saying, very small country town, like an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. And I don't know how to explain it, man, but Atlanta is one of those places that like, you know, when you come to it, you feel like it's a good place and you, you, uh, like you want to stay there. So I remember, uh, my first time going to Atlanta and like really kind of just seeing the city and seeing like the vibe of the city and kind of the culture of it made me go like, well, I have to move here. Plus I've always been interested in music and just like music related stuff. So it made sense, it was, you know, it's like Atlanta, Atlanta is like king of being the, the king of music for however many years. And it's an hour and a half away from where I live. Like I have to go there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so, I mean, I've, I would say I've always had my hand in like music based stuff at least since I was 16, no, at least since I was 19. Um, I had my first, I would say music industry based, I guess job, it was really an internship um, was, I was working for a publicist and that was kind of my first uh, step into the game, like really learning about the music industry and kind of like how stuff was going, at least from that side. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, it just kind of got me interested in a bunch of things around music. And I just would try a bunch of stuff, you know, like I would, I would start a blog, I would, you know, try growing like a playlist, try growing like a SoundCloud, something, try growing an Instagram page. It's like something that always kept me close to the music stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it gave me a chance to kind of figure some stuff out. Um, without dragging the story out the way that i got into marketing was i pretty much had while working for that publicist and kind of the opportunities that came past that um i started to hear a lot of marketing calls you know uh the first time i ever heard like a marketing budget get talked about i was on a call for i believe a uh, iHeartRadio radio hearing about a radio campaign and they brought up like yeah like radio is like you know like two hundred thousand. it's like oh shit you know what i'm saying like this is like really how much is kind of getting spent there so that was my first introduction to just marketing related stuff. Um, but I was able to start kind of using those things uh, a couple of years later while working with this artist that, that lived out here in Atlanta. And that was the first time I kind of had an artist that I was able to work with pretty closely and like be able to test out some of the marketing stuff that at least I started to pick up on since, you know, really starting to see kind of the other side of it. Um, and it just led me to a point to where I was trying to build out marketing campaigns around his stuff. Um, but pretty much that relationship ended up ending just because of its own reasons. And uh, I pretty much around the time of, around the time of, um, I would say, I'm trying to remember what he was doing around that time. I think he was getting ready to put out a project. He was getting ready to put out a project and we had got to the point where we're like, yo, we're trying to get uh, some investment money. Let's build out this plan around it. Let's like have something. Let's try like shout to people like, you know, have give them something to kind of stand behind. Right. Um, so the relationship pretty much ends, it ends because of its own reasons. And that just left me with, a, with in a position where I had built up all these marketing contacts, um, like playlists, influencers, like all these different things. And I didn't have anything to do with them. Mm. Um, so I was just talking to a friend and he was like, yo man, like why not just start doing what you're doing and help other artists? Like why not help other artists kind of build out with the things you're doing? Just use the marketing stuff you kind of picked up for them. And so that's really kind of what, what pushed me into it. Um, that was, that was what got me like into at least the offering marketing services to other people. Um, and it really was amped up when Sean put me on his YouTube account. That was kind of the point where like, 
you know, it's, it's one thing to talk about the stuff that you do, but it's another thing to like experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of have to live it out. Cause as, as content creators, we kind of have to do a lot of the things that we're telling artists to do. So it's one thing to just like, you know, be able to see it from an external position and then also be able to see it from like what you have to do from day to day. You know, like sure. we have to post videos, we have to look at our analytics and like do all that stuff. Right. Um, so that's what really kind of just amped it up for me. And then from there, man, it's just been just diving heavy into it from, from, from there uh, right. ever since. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, so I, I mean, dude, I, I, dude, we're going to, I think we're going to geek out. Like I have so many things that I already can, like the things that are flooding in my mind right now to ask you about, like, I'm right. so, I'm so pumped. And like, so, so let's, let's just start with this. Um, you know, I, myself, I'm an independent artist, right? Produce my own music, shit like that. So I'm always trying to get game and gems from guys like you, any, anybody. Um, I'm wondering, what do you see in general from most independent artists um, kind of across the board in terms of their struggles? In terms of their struggles? Yeah. Man. Is there um, com common themes that you've seen? <laughs> I think the clients that are the artists that struggle the most are the ones that have a hard time grasping social media and content creation. Okay. Because there's what artists, and this is artists really of almost any level, like they just want to like create, you know, like a lot of artists get into music because they, they enjoy making music. Right. Um, and I think that sometimes learning how much work that you really have to do around the stuff that you just were you know, really trying to do for fun um, I think that kind of like messes a lot of artists up because then like once you, uh, that's the thing that whenever we introduce clients who aren't content savvy already or who have, aren't used to trying to make YouTube videos or posting their TikTok or stuff, or stuff, those are always um, the ones that have the most trouble converting stuff that we're doing off of the campaigns. Mm -hmm. Just because 60% of marketing is content, you know what I'm saying? And it could almost be any content, but if you don't, if you can't grasp like what making content looks like for you, uh, then a lot of that stuff just, you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't tie tie together the same. Right. So I would say that, uh, not figuring out how to use your Instagram and stay active on your lives, uh, not figuring out how to post three or four times on your YouTube account, you know what I'm saying? Like not figuring out how to stay active on TikTok or whatever platform you choose sure. or even whatever content strategy you choose to take, not trying to figure it out is probably the, the, the worst thing. Mm -hmm. um, because on... Once again, on their side, content is like 60% of the game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's how people are, are staying engaged with you. It's how people uh, kind of want to like consume you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and the marketing stuff, at least the paid marketing stuff, doesn't really work if you're not doing that stuff. So it's like, even if you're spending money on yourself, even if you're doing all this stuff, if you're not staying active with that, it just doesn't hit the same. Mm. So that's something I see across like, all levels of artists, just that. Um, other than that, I, I wouldn't say there's, I wouldn't say there's, there's common themes, at least not in the marketing, marketing related stuff. Like, I mean, maybe we, we probably could get into that. Like, you know, maybe as far as like testing and doing certain things around like ads and stuff. But the only, only thing I would say that I wish more artists would do is like experimental content and just try stuff, just post. Mm -hmm. The worst mm -hmm. thing that happens is you, you don't make it again, you know, or you turn the ad off or you don't pay another influencer. You know, that's the worst thing that could happen. But just trying something will get you a long way just in, uh, just as far as like just getting better at doing the stuff that you have to do anyway because you have to do it as an artist you might as well try it you know especially if you're taking it serious like if you're an artist that wants to take music seriously from 2020 and up you're going to have to create content you know there's just no way around it um so it's like you might as well just bite the bullet and just get into it and start figuring out what's this, what, what is that going to look like for you um because that helps people like me <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I mean, I, I know the mindset I've developed was mm. like, I have love for writing lyrics, recording vocals, like making music, same, right? But I started developing that same love for making content. Like it gets to a point yeah. where I'm like, you know, I love making a podcast just as much as I love making a song, right? And that, yeah. that helps a lot. I mean, any kind of way that you can like mitigate your struggle. I mean, you're obviously always going to have to do things you don't want to do. But if there's any way you can say, well, like, like you just said, content 60% of the game. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like all like philosophical and I'm all about the mindset. Cause I know like, you know, if you want to get people to do stuff, I mean, yes, you do have to bite the bullet. I agree with that. And I think also like what's helped me bite the bullet is just thinking like, you know what, maybe there's like 
a way I could do something other than making songs that's fun. That's yeah. also kind of manageable. Like me doing this podcast is like hella easy, bro. Like I get guys like you, like awesome people like you. And I have to do half the work right now because you're going to do some talking. And then I can also just yeah. like talk for 10 minutes and put it out. Like that's an example of something that's manageable. Um, you know, I've, I've started, you know, adopting like doing duets with producers on TikTok and rapping to their beats. Like that's hella easy. Like you have to yes, write bro. one verse yes. that's like not Too even trouble, 16 bro. bars. It's not even 16 bars. But like I did one yesterday. It was like uh, eight bars. I was like, oh, or maybe it was like 10. It was like super short. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, this isn't even a whole, whole ass verse. So like stuff like that's hella easy. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to, to know from you when you say experiment with content, right? Could you kind of just throw some, some ideas as to what would be good ways to do that? That's like native to certain platforms. Yeah, man. I mean, some of it is that, like what you were just saying, F figuring out what is fun for you to make or what kind of comes easy to you. Like if you paint, if you're a natural visual artist, find a way to incorporate that into the content that you put out. You know, um, if you're into sports, you know, figure out a way to just like commentate around it and let your fans know you're into it. I mm -hmm. think one of the best ways to get started is just finding, is by finding a bunch of artists that you like the way they present themselves through content. And just kind of like, you know, like not copy it, but use it for inspiration, you know? Yeah. Um, because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in once you get comfortable on the platform and you get comfortable within the way you have to make stuff for the platform, it becomes easier to come up with those kind of like one of one really creative ideas that everyone wants. Like no one, like I think the people who have the most uh, trouble with content, they want that like unique out the gate uh, idea that's going to take them out of here, like out the gate. And it's like, no, nah, you have to, you don't even know how to make a TikTok video yet. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you don't know how to cut the video down yet. You don't even know how to do, do the most basic stuff. Get it out of the way first. And then that stuff will start to come to you, you know? Um, and then plus, I think a lot of creating content on, on platforms is just understanding the culture of the platform. So like that, that thing that you're talking about, like that's, that's great. That ties right along with just the stuff that is moving on TikTok as far as like rapping based content. Like that's the easy way for artists to like hop on something and start getting some momentum on that, you know? And then they're on there, they're using it. They can start to uh, see the content that's coming across their For You page and the stuff that they're seeing just while they like go through the creators they like and find stuff they like and maybe start to get ideas like, yo, this is a cool idea. This person did this, I could do something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, put my own twist on it. And then as you start to build people around it that like you, I think that becomes easier because then you can, you are able to get um, a lot more experimental because now you have a base of people to give you feedback, you know? But in the beginning, you're just trying to get people around you to give you that feedback on like, do we like it? Do we not like it? At least for, so for, for most of it, I think it's just that, bro. Just like finding some artists that you like the way they handle the platform. If you're like, yo, I want to grow my YouTube account. I don't know how to grow it out. Find an artist that you think they do YouTube in a nice way. Yeah. Or a fire ass way, you know, and then just look at the stuff they post and see what you can do. Oh, they do vlogs. Like, okay, I could do vlogs. I have a camera. You know, I could do something like that. Right. Okay, this artist does skits. Okay, I'm a funny guy. Like, I could I could throw in like, you know, some some stuff like that in there. Oh, this artist is doing reaction videos, you know, since other artists. Okay, like I, I like I could do that. I'm cool with that. You know, like whatever you think you could do or you would be cool with doing, just try it out. Right. Like, the worst thing that can happen is you you never make it again. <laughs> right. And you make more content and people forget, you know. That's the worst thing that can happen. I, I, yeah, like, I love it. I love everything you're talking about. Like I'm all the way there with you. And I, and yeah. I think that one thing that, um, that I learned this year, especially was like the stuff, uh, I learned that the things that you get results from are simple to understand, but hard to execute. Like, yeah, that, you know what I mean? Like stuff yeah. you're, you're talking, you're not really like saying these things that are so like insane and weird and like hard to understand yeah. like everything you're saying is you're like i don't know try it like try this try that but the fact is like the thing that will help people is like you have to get hella reps in you have to do it yeah. like daily you literally have to do something like i'm always like there needs to be one piece of content that you do you have to present yourself every day like if you only like i was just talking to how to rap drew and he's talking about doing something and allotting uh, the same exact time every day to do something. Yeah. So like, he's like, Hey, like if every day from 12 PM to 1230, you're freestyle, you're freestyling, practicing your skills. I like that. And I add it. It should be something that, pre that you're presenting to the, uh, to the people. So like, if you're doing your freestyle session, do it live on IG. Cause then you're like putting out a piece of content. Like I'm all about like efficiency, you know, like, 
That's my whole thing, right? Like, yeah. how can I take this one thing? Like, I learned it from Gary Vee. How can I take this one thing and, like, put it all over the place? What's yeah. your – how how do you guys – um what's your kind of stance on, like, repurposing content? Like, wh- how do you feel about all that? I, I love it, man. Like, that, that makes it easier to do, you know. I think knowing how to repurpose is a skill within itself because sometimes everything doesn't make sense for everything, you know. Yeah. I mean, or the audience that you're kind of cultivating there. But if you're able to do, to, to do that, I think it's, it's a cheat code to stay consistent. Yeah. Um, and, man, and like, I think a lot of it just starts by artists first, first trying to figure out like what is content. Cause the first thing people think of is like, okay, content is the music, music video and like photos of me. And it's like, no content can extend beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Like content could just be, like you said, just you uh, just like practicing, like you're practicing writing or something, just talking to your fans. That's a video. People are what people just watch you for 30 minutes, you know, and then now you put that on your IGTV and that's another piece of content. And then you rip it and throw it on YouTube. Boom. That's, that's three, four pieces of content right there. You know, I think just, uh, artists being able to view it like that, the ones that do get it and like do understand that I think they have an easier time creating content. Um, and that's why hearing y'all just try stuff. Anything could be content and does sound wild, but just from the amount of things that I've seen work as content for people, I've, I've just, I think the, the, I think all marketers would agree that we've seen the wildest things work, you know, some stuff that we wouldn't, would have never guessed would be the thing that people would really like. Um, so I really mean that, like, you'll just try stuff because it really could be anything, you know, but if you want to have like a controlled way of just like, you know, have a kind of a blueprint, just find someone that you like what they're doing, you respect the way they make content or the way they're kind of handling it. Um, and then just try to figure out how to make that you and your own thing. And, once you get, I think I agree with you. Like a lot of people are, are discouraged just by the, uh, the like technical side of it, like the execution side of it. Mm. And it's like some things, yeah, maybe you will have to figure out how to get somewhere involved. Some things aren't, you know what I'm saying? As hard as you, as you thought it would be, you know? Um, and, but I really mean try everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you, you had said that 60% of the game is content. What's the other 40%? I would say the other the other forty percent would be your network, just kind of like the people you know, um, who are the people you're working with, who are the people you're kind of letting in your circle, you know, if we if we will, if we'll just leave it at that. Uh, a large part of it is also I think business infrastructure and like learning how to run your artist career like a business, you know, because that's also I think one of the hardest things for artists to kind of accept is oh this thing I have to do is really like a job, like it's work, you know. But there are a lot of moving pieces to it, especially if you plan to get as, as big as you as 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 it can get, you know, like every level it just gets more work. You know what I'm saying? There's more things you have to do. Um, but like you just find whatever level is comfortable for you and just you know do the work that, that kind of gets you there or push you there. Um so I would say that. Um the the business infrastructure and just figuring out how to build out like a team and a system of things that help you kind of manage stuff s- smoothly. And and I think past that just quality like do people like it are people clicking with the music you know um because at the end of the day like as a music artist you are you are either selling kind of your brand or the music and if that's the core that you're building you know what I'm saying yourself around which most artists want to build around like the music um I think then it's that like are people clicking with it um but I say content is 60% of the game because it's all about keeping it's all about keeping people who are interested in use attention, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's why we preach use multiple platforms as marketers because each platform gives you a different way to hold somebody's attention and keep someone invested in you and hopefully push them through the journey and, of you and make them like, like you enough to give you money one day, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that because there's so many different places that you have to do it and even just learning how to do it in the places you pick is, is a lot of work. Um, that's why I think it's sixty percent of the game because it's like the figuring out what you're going to put out, figuring out how you're going to do what you want to put out, um, and then executing it, you know, and and then do people like it past that point, like, and that's the last part you you can't control past that point. People like it, people don't like it. Um, so it's something that isn't going away. Like YouTube isn't going away tomorrow. Instagram isn't going away. Right. Facebook, you know, maybe, but. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so it's like, you're, you're going to have to figure this stuff out anyway. Um, and even the people who kind of make decisions around you, uh, whether it be, do I like you as a, as a fan? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I like you enough to be a fan? Or even do I want to work with you? Do I want to do certain things? Like 
the first thing people look at is your content and the, the things around you. If you reach out to someone trying to network, the first thing they're going to do is look at your Instagram account, go look up your YouTube account, you know, maybe yeah. check your Spotify and like, see like, yo, like what do you have going on? Um, so content is even seen as a sign of work ethic just to people that you may want to work around you, you know? Um, this is how I feel as a marketer, man. It's like when I, the artists that are already producing content, it's like, oh, cool. There's a, you're already at a certain level, at least in that, you know what I'm saying? You have enough to where uh, we can test around stuff and figure something out, you know, which is a lot harder to do uh, than with the artist who has, you know, not a lot of content out is the best way to put it. Right. Um, so just the act of managing the social media platforms and the platforms you have to use, uh, the act of needing things for the marketing that you're going to have to do to push yourself out. And then just the way people are, are consuming stuff. We're content based creatures. You know what I'm saying? We like stuff. We like consuming content. It's like, so you're, you're, you're literally fighting against that. Like that is why I think content is 60% of the game. Cause it controls so many other things. If you don't have consistent content or good content, then you have nothing to market around. You don't have anything to push around, you know? Um, so that's why I say that. But uh, yeah, the rest I would definitely say is your network and the business structure and kind of, um, uh, well, yeah, mostly the network and the business structure. Yeah. It, it's so crazy. Like, I mean, just in the past couple of weeks, like on the podcast, like that is some stuff, all stuff that I've talked about is, yeah. you know, all the rap, all the rap, like I just had a friend call me. He, he's just kind of getting into his career, put out a really dope album. And he's like, Hey, like, um, he called me and he's like, yeah, I really need help with, uh, with Spotify stuff and like Spotify marketing. So I was like, all right, well, um, like I asked him, like, do you have like, okay, I really want to get your take on this too. All right. I could be totally wrong and I'm cool with being wrong. I told him, I was like, bro, you should probably focus on like figuring out a way to build a business for yourself. Like, why don't you try making clothes and like building that? Cause then you have income. Cause streaming is, it's really, really hard to build a really viable income stream with streaming. And I was telling him about, why don't you use Facebook ads? Like, why aren't you, you should try, you have music videos. So why don't you try Facebook advertising instead of spending mm -hmm. dumbass amounts of money on playlist push or submit hub for Spotify playlist. Why don't you just try Facebook ads? Cause you could get cheaper conversions. You don't have a big budget anyway. Yeah. Um, he had 300 bucks. I was like, bro, if you spend 300 on Facebook ads, video views, like you probably get a lot of views on your video and then you could like retarget people, all this. But then I just, at the end of the call, I just said, look, you got to start thinking of yourself as a business and start thinking like linear steps of like, what's going to happen. Like you only have 300 bucks. You spend it on Spotify, then what? And he's like, yeah. I don't know. I'm like, well, why don't you do something where at least you'll know the next, like if you spend it on Facebook, you could at least retarget people and then do other stuff. Like that's a way better investment. So my yeah. question to you is more about the Spotify thing. I've been like really like kind of mad at Spotify and like not mad at Spotify, but just mad about the whole like, huh, this makes like, it's just not, it just doesn't, it, it, what's making more sense to me is the, um, is the idea that, that Spotify and Instagram really is more out to benefit themselves than they are build a platform for us. And like, I'm way more on the mindset of like the Ryan Leslie thing of like, why don't you just get like just 40,000 customers? That's, you know what I mean? Like, that's it. Like yeah. just 40,000. Like, that's not a lot of people, quote unquote, but if they all have bought something, it is. And yeah. like, I know for a while he didn't have his music on streaming platforms, but he made a lot of money. It's like, I'm all on this train of like direct to consumer. I'm like really upset with just like finding out like the way things work. And I'm like, so what, what's your stance on like, actually building a business as an artist, like in terms of relating to Spotify and like Instagram and the platforms and all that? Um, I mean, I think everything is kind of a piece of the, the, the monetary pie, you know what I'm saying? Like streaming is what it is. That should be uh, going right along you, possibly selling merch, uh, possibly taking, getting like donations on platforms, different platforms from your fans, like TikTok and Twitch. And now even Instagram has the, um, the donation badge now where people can donate money to you that like there are people who make a lot of money from that you know like there are artists who get a lot of money donated on those platforms um like we've had artists tell us at least in the early stages of tiktok it's, it may not be the same now but there were artists who were getting like thousands of dollars worth of donations on tiktok you know and i'm sure some of the the bigger ones like influencers or artists on there who have like solid fan bases probably make a lot doing it 
if not there, they do on the other platforms where they're collecting donations as well, you know? So that's another piece of the pie. Um, and then I think from there, just finding other creative ways to monetize that you're willing to do the work around. I've met artists who throw events. I've met artists who have like side businesses within what they do. Like they had, they engineer on the side, you know, they produce on the side, they're selling their beats. <clears throat> and they figure out ways to like just tie the whole like pie together. So I think just figuring out like what all is in the pie that you could do, you know, uh, how many pieces of the pie are there? You know what I'm saying? Like, and seeing which ones you can actually take advantage of and, and use to put money into your pocket. Now, as far as the, like, the actual business side of it, like running the business side of it, I think, I think the moment that you decide to spend money on yourself uh, to the point where like you're really going to take it seriously, that's when you should start to look into like, all right, what do I have to do as far as like just being a business? You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot in that as well, you know, uh, or at least finding someone around you that you trust that knows about it and kind of help you guide you there. Because there are going to be things that you have to pay attention to as you make money. <laughs> you know, like it, it becomes a business, like you said. Um, being an artist is a business. Um, and at least like having some basic understanding of like what goes into, like even just the foundational stuff, like creating the business for it, it goes a long way um, and will help you just as you build. Because if you build, you're going to have to deal with more and more money, you know, so you're going to have to learn more about this stuff at, at some point. And like I said with the content stuff, like you might as well start figuring out at some point because you might as well start, figure out, start figuring out as soon as you can, because at some point you're going to have to figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I look at business as the same way. But um or the business of, like around art is kind of the same way um but yeah I man i've seen artists monetize like a bunch of different ways live stream concerts merch you know what i'm saying like donations on platforms like they're, they're on twitch asking for donations making hella money you know um so i think there are enough ways for artists to make money out here if they really look into it i think sometimes people get caught around the streaming money you know it's like streaming money isn't a lot and it's like yeah you're right so figure out the other ways to make money and go back right. to <laughs> those ways, you know? Um, and I think when artists do the research into how many ways you can make money, I, I think they're shocked, you know? Uh, because if you, if you really start to look into all of that stuff, like there's a lot to do, or there's a lot you can do. And I also think that a lot of artists should look at the monetary part of their business almost in the same way that uh, content influencers, uh, the way content influencers do it, right? Like they take, uh, endorsements and sponsorship deals. I've seen artists do this, the same thing with their social media accounts, like promote certain things, um, like contests and equipment companies that they believe in and stuff like that. Like there's so many ways for artists to monetize and make money out here that I think that just figuring out what those ways look like and how you can kind of tap into some of them and then just the technical business stuff will take you a long way, you know? Mm -hmm. That's great. Like all of those ways to monetize, um, I get you just named a bunch that I didn't, I didn't really know about the whole donations on Instagram or like all well, that bro, stuff. The, the credit badge, man, man, you got the credit badge is, is yeah. Like uh, I didn't even know about that. Yeah. So the uh, donation culture, in my opinion is, is, I don't think it's super huge right now, but I think it's getting there because all of these younger uh, kids who like are used to watching their favorite credits on TikTok and Twitch and now Instagram, are going to grow up at a point where it's like they're used to giving just donate money to artists they like and people they like like it's a big that's a huge part of tiktok culture you know the donation thing that's a huge part of instagram is trying to make it a thing with the bash thing you know that's a huge part of twitch is fan donations and there are artists who make a lot of money off their fan donations um so i just think that that's going to become more of a norm as these social media platforms build out so that's been and that's one that even if you're not trying to use it sometimes just once again just using the platforms and stuff will just make you money off of doing that you know you go live and talk to your fans they may just donate because they're happy that you're they're talking to them they're in their room bored you know they're like oh I bet this tiktok coin is 99 cents you know what's 99 cents but then when they do that 20 times this one person has bought has made you 20 dollars you know um through something that was just kind of there but yeah, that's the one that I think a lot of a lot of artists sleep on. Like just tap into donation culture. Like turn your you're going live on Instagram anyway, turn the badge on, you know, because you never know. Worst thing that happens is you don't make any money, but you might make fifty dollars. No. So that's so crazy <laughs> because like I'm hella dumb because that donation thing, I thought that that was asking to donate to like a charity and I never turned it on because I didn't want to yeah. pressure people to donate to like something I didn't even know about. No, so it's not the it's not the donate button, it's the um it's the it's pretty much a badge that you see when you're about to go live. So you have to, I don't, I'm not completely I've sure. I've seen you, that. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're in, I think the creators program, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I know content creators who are in it that don't have access to it. 
Okay. So I don't completely know all the steps to it, but I think that um, you have to be a part of Instagram creators program. And I believe that you have to have a certain amount of uh, activity going on in your Instagram account. That's what I think. Uh, I have a theory. I have a theory that um, Instagram is testing out like watch time and stuff like that mm. on their account. You know, trying to, everyone's trying to compete with YouTube while also competing with TikTok, you know. Um, so right. how do you incorporate some of the monetization stuff in ways to track that uh, with the virality stuff of like TikTok, you know. So that's my theory. I think they play, they, they, they place who gets that off of that. Like, are, do you have enough activity going around it or justify giving you this? No. So I just looked on mine. It, it, it is what I thought. It says fundraiser. So I don't see that thing, but the fundraisers where you can pick a charitable cause or something. So I'm going to, I'm going to look into seeing, but I think, and then the TikTok thing, I'm trying to figure that out too, with like going live on TikTok. Cause I know people can donate that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once, yeah. Once you have a thousand followers on TikTok, you can go live, and then yeah, once you and can accept go live, donations. You can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crazy. What What about like what about artists building their own websites and kind of you know selling their merchandise that way with maybe a Shopify or ClickFunnels or something like that? What do you think of all that? Um, man, like I like like what we talked about in the business conversation, man. I think that if you can manage doing all of that, then like yes, you know, because that's something that you're going that. If you're building out your your music business, your artist business the right way, uh, merch is going to be a huge thing. And I think controlling the spaces where you kind of run your merch and even just like just having a space that you control is important, you know, and all, you kind of always want to tie everything back to that. Um, but then from there, I think sometimes it becomes about convenience. You know, I know people who sell their merch through their websites. I know people who sell their merch through YouTube, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the merch bars at the bottom of the videos and stuff, because it's just easier for however they want to run it, you know? Um, so even if that is what encourages artists to kind of get into it, I'm never against it. You know, it's like, all right, this is what, this, if this is what it takes to get you to start selling merch, like, cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, let's do it. But yes, I think long-term it should tie back to like your own website or your own domain or something at some point. Shopify, um, to be honest, man, I haven't had anyone using Shopify recently just because of the pandemic stuff and just the, the, the shipping times and, and things. I know a lot of people kind of got turned away from it, or at least artists who got turned away from it and gotcha. kind of got into shipping their own stuff out. So then, you know, the ones that can manage doing that at a high volume, they do it. You know, the ones that feel like they can't, they're figuring out <laughs> how they can do it, you know, or how they can put it together in a manageable way. So I think that's the most important side is just, if you're, once again, serious, spending serious money on yourself, you're marketing yourself, you're promoting yourself. Um, I think just figuring out how you can even maintain just, even if it has to be a Shopify account connected to a WordPress store, like how can you afford to pay that price for the whole year so you can at least have it there as an option, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause you never know, like you never know. Like, you may you may only hit a thousand people the whole year and like three may have bought something, you know what I'm saying? But that's a start. <laughs> right. Like the fact that someone clicked over and bought, uh, went over to your website or went, over to whatever, uh, went over to whatever and bought something, in my opinion, is an indicator that you know there's a there's a, there's a good sign. That's a good sign for you. There's hope for you. You know, right? Because if one person likes it, it's a thousand people. If it's a thousand people, it's ten thousand people. You know, if it's ten thousand, it's a hundred thousand. That's how I feel. You know. Yeah. Um, Talk about like, <clears throat> so like I'm very interested in, I'm very interested in the concept of like streamlining your process. You know, I don't like right. personally, and maybe this is just how the game is supposed to go. I don't like leaving things up to chance, especially if I'm trying to run a business. So I kind of feel like a lot of artists are doing that. They're just like, not the successful ones. I've just mean like artists are like, yeah, like, let me just, you know, it kind of turns into a bit of a clout chasing game where it's like, let me get my numbers up. Like I need to build an audience. Um, and I feel like that's not, you know, I'm like, not, nah, I need to have like a pipeline, like a funnel to a funnel actually is the perfect word to describe it the way I like things to go. So yeah. can you kind of talk about like, um, I mean, you're, you're sort of already talking about it, but let, let, let's talk about, um, you know, let, let's fucking, let's use me as an example. Like, fuck it. Like, let's use me as an example, right? Like I can put out music okay. whenever, like I produce all my own shit. Okay. So I, and it's cost me $0 to make a song. Like I can do music however fast, whatever. Right. So I could, I could pay, pretty much make that. I can do content all the time, right? I do tick, the TikTok shit I told you. I do the pod every day. It's like the content's easy. The making the music's easy. I think where I have not done a lot is like I don't make tons of offers. Like I 
very rarely do. And it's not because I don't want to, it's because mostly I've just struggled with that. Right. So like, what would be like some ideas you could have for a guy who's in maybe my position where, you know, do I start building offers? Like, how do I build those offers? Like, and then also how do I, how do I, how do I build that audience? Like what, what are some other ways? Not just like, is there a paid advertising aspect that I might be missing as well? Um, you know, like just, what do you think? All right. So I, I always started, started here. Like once again, where's your audience at? You know, what do you feel like? How engaged do you feel they are? Um, you know, are they talking to you in a way that makes you feel like you're ready to start trying to figure out how to like monetize certain things, uh, certain things and put stuff together? Got it. <laughs> if you feel like you're in a, in a position to do that, uh, then I think the first place to start is, you know, sometimes just testing like basic little things, see if they'll buy a sticker, you know, see if they'll, see if you can get enough people to buy a t-shirt, you know, a limited run of t-shirts you're putting out around a single or something like that. Um, but then once you kind of get to a point to where you feel like the base is serious enough to where you want to really build out a merch strategy and just have things that are appealing to your fan base, I think that's when it starts to become about the creativity of your merch and what you're offering to people. Okay. Um, so I, I have one artist that I was talking to who his fan base, or he's really into video games. He, he streams on Twitch a lot. He talks about him a lot, you know what I'm saying? He, he posts about it in his story. His fans know that he's really in the video games. Um, and there was one idea that we kicked around. Where I was like, man, like, you already know that your fans are into this stuff because they're, they're on all these platforms watching you play. They're talking about it. You should do, like, like custom PlayStation uh, controller skins, you know what I'm saying? Like, Got it. custom Xbox controller skins because that's something that your base will associate with. Like, you know there are gamers in your base because you game, you know what I'm saying? That's a unique merch proposition. Like, somebody will buy that, you know? So I think having a mixture of kind of, like, baseline stuff that your fans have told you they want you just feel like you know game of knowing your audience knowing what they kind of may want and unique things to give them you know uh, whether that be unique items or unique experiences like virtual live streams virtual concerts um i've seen artists do things like you know pre pre-corona of course like paid meetups with fans where they would go do something like hang out somewhere and do something um to uh artists who have throwing their own festivals and put their own shows together. You know what I'm saying? Like use that as a way to kind of like, you know, I, I never know the money side of it for them, but you know, they at least use it to build something valuable out for them and kind of like play into the bigger sell of the other stuff. Um, so like, once again, kind of goes back to like, what, like, what do you feel like you could build around based on the things you're seeing in your base? You know what I'm saying? I always get trying to get people to start there. So like, what do you feel like you could build around from the things you're seeing in your base? like writing this stuff down. So, you know, it's funny, like you asked that. And like one thing I was just talking to one of my best friends about was, um, so like, I'm all into like entrepreneurship, personal development, organizing your time, like shit like that. Like that's something I'm yeah. super passionate about. So my friend was like, why don't you make like a planner? Like, why don't you make your own type of planner? Cause I journal every day and I have like sections of my journal where I like, it's like segmented and separated. He's like, dude, you should literally like make one. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, fuck, I don't have it. There, there, there's that one. Oh, hold up. Yeah, this is it. So, like, this thing. Have you ever seen the productivity planner? No, I haven't. All right. So, like, this is, like, a thing. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't a big fan of it. I used it for a bit. But, you know, it's kind of, like, separated. Like, it separates your days. And, like, you can write things down. You can see how long it's going to take. Like, it's just a good way to be productive. I, I wasn't okay, a fan of okay. it for other reasons, but but this was the idea. My friend was like, yeah, like that productivity planner you bought, why don't you make one? Because like your fans are all into like entrepreneurship, productivity, taking ownership, Gary V type shit. I was like, bet. So I'm kind of getting started thinking about that because I think that's something that could be cool. And um, so like, that would be an answer to the question you just asked. Like, that's kind of my thought process on that. There you go, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, and it's it's literally that. Like, where where and you could do that and sell t-shirts and right. Have, you know, like have that that kind of baseline stuff. So I think I think it's that, man. Like, what is unique to you? Uh, what can you tie around stuff you're interested in or things that your fans know about? You know, once again, I've seen artists do things from movie like movie date kind of things to you know video game tournaments to like a bunch of stuff, man. Like, I've really seen artists make money in a bunch of ways around their brand. And the things they presented to their fan base. So I think it's just about finding those things that you're already kind of naturally into or already kind of giving them building there, building on some of the more traditional 
money methods, the streams, the, the merch, the t-shirt, the hat, you know, right. um, all that stuff. And then just like figuring out, uh, figuring out how to keep it all together, you know, just keep it running. Like keep so, the business running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I'm curious about this too. I'm sure there's multiple ways to answer this question, but um, you guys are obviously like you use paid ads. I know you mm -hmm. guys do that because you've talked about it. I've seen it. Um, yeah. So like, for example, in my position, like right this second, I don't have merch right this second. I obviously will, but like, I don't right now. Do I get all of that ready first and then start building that audience with however you guys think, or do you think you can start with some paid ads, building the audience and then throwing, throwing offers their way? So are you, are you asking if you can kind of like start just kind of start cold, just trying to build around people who are buying the merch and stuff? Is that kind of what you're asking? I think I'm asking like in the order, like the, what order would you do things? Would you, would you start trying to grow an audience with, I'm actually asking specifically for paid ads. Like if you okay. were to spend money on ads, like let's say I had some money to spend on ads and I wanted to, would you think, well, would you say get your merch first? test it and then spend money or like if i don't have like i don't have merch right now so would you just be like well then for yeah. right now spend some money on ads and like build that warm audience that you can retarget and then when you have when you do have the merch you can sell it like what order would you do things would you wait yeah. to have the offer there so that people don't get cold once you get them in or, or are you just like nah like what do you think no i but be i believe in building the audience first i mean okay. like I, I believe in building the audience first because there's some uh, potholes you can avoid if you just wait till you have a base of people that like you to ask <laughs> what they like, you know? Um, because at the end of the day, you are kind of like trying to please people that like you. So you may create something that doesn't click with them. And, you know, you would have known that if you kind of asked them, if you have people there to kind of like talk to and like, or even just like try to uh, push back into it. The person that is already familiar with you in some way, shape, or form is more likely to buy something than the person who doesn't know you. Yeah. Even if all they ever done is seen you in passing, they saw your ad once while they were watching the Play What Cardi video, you know? <laughs> um, right. So I think the long-term game is, is building towards that, like having a large enough group of people that you'll have enough people to try to pitch to get whatever you have to sell. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I, I think you're... I mean, I'm, yeah, you have more experience than me, but I'm sure you're right. Like, um, okay, let me ask you this then. Like, let's say, um, w like, give me what you think a recommended budget would be. Like, I know a lot of artists say they don't have a budget. Let's forget that. Let's just, let's say I'm willing to pull out my credit card. And I'm like, yo, let's fucking get it. Like, let me, I need to build an audience. This is it. Um, Cause that dude, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I'm in not that exact position right now, but I've always been like, you know, I'm, I'm fully in the music thing is like, this is it. Like I'm deciding to do that. And I know there's yeah. a hell of other artists that do that. People listening to the pod right now, like what's a number that you think people could wrap their head around to get started with whatever paid ads, Facebook, YouTube ads, whatever. What's a number where you're like, yo, throw this down with some good content. Obviously this is predicated on the actual content's actually good. What, yeah. What's a number? Is that even an answer you can give? Like, kind of just what's like a number we could wrap our head around in terms of paid ads. Yeah. So if you're running them yourself, I think that you can get, I think a good place to start is three to $500 a month. Mm -hmm. um, for how many months? Forever. Hopefully, you know, yeah, okay. Got uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think definitely lean a lot closer to 500 because once you really start to learn about ads, the biggest thing I think that, or the biggest thing I think people have to learn about ads is that there's a lot of testing involved. You know, you can't just kind of throw all your money and everything out the gate because you don't know what works. How would you know that? You haven't, you haven't put anything in front of anybody. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So you kind of need a, an initial test budget, something kind of burned through the, oh, I thought this clip of the video, I thought Taylor Swift fans would like that, you know? Well, you were wrong, you know? It has a, a $2 cost per click, you know? So mm. now you gotta go back and set another ad up and try it again. Um, mm. So I think you need enough to kind of cover that initial budget and then enough to keep it running once you figure out what works. Um, but I think that, I think to really start to get like a really significant impact, at least like $1,000 a month or so, like at least. Oh, really, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
because if you have enough things running, like scaling up to a good point, like you're, you're at some point you're going to want to test stuff out. So you have a, a cool test budget. So let's say you put out a, a cover video in the meantime, and you want to see if that works better as an ad. And then you can retarget it to people. You can build out its own audience, do that whole thing. Um, in worst case scenario, you just do more people into your audience set, you know, right. best case scenario it works. And then you have something else you're trying to figure out how to scale up as well. You know? So I think, I think that is a, a good first step to try to get to. Um, but even if spending five, 10, $15 is, is what is a, is what gets you interested in it. Like that's, that's a good start in my opinion. Um, but I think building yourself up to the point where you're spending at least like three, 500 is a good place to start. Okay. Um, and then from there, hopefully, you know, as you figure out how to do it and get better at it, the results will start to kind of speak for themselves, you know, speak for themselves. And you may not always make the money back directly, but, you know, music is a loss leader uh, business business model for most people. Like most people right. start out where you're going to spend a lot more, a lot of money in the beginning to make a lot of money long time. Mm -hmm. That's just the, the model of music, you know. Um, but I think as a good way to learn that lesson, because at least you get data back <laughs> from the money yeah. that you put out. <laughs> into Immediately. The world. Yeah. Which is great. And you can retarget people, which is really cool. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. When you, I just, a quick question, like you were talking about metrics, like what are some metrics you look at to see if a piece of content performs well? A piece of content? I mean, it depends on the platform, you know? Okay. So if we're talking TikTok, we're looking at views on the For You page and um, you know, even some like demographic stuff, like age, uh, all that stuff. Well, not age, but uh, uh uh, the the type of people kind of coming into it, like are they kind of matching the demo that we're looking to hit? Um, if we're talking, let's say like an Instagram post, we may be looking at, I would say the biggest thing across all platforms that are the most paid attention to is audience retention. Um, I think if you can, whatever that platform shows you as far as the audience retention around a certain piece of content, I personally think that's the most important metric. Okay. Cause that shows you like, is, is, what you're, is whatever you're making interesting to people that you're putting it in front of? Are they watching this piece of content that you're putting out? If this video has a 65% and this one has an 18%, do more than 65%, <laughs> you know? Got it, right. Um, so looking at stuff like that, but then from there, we, I'm trying to think how to explain it, man. So the, the way I try to train the people at our agency is to kind of look at the bigger picture of everything when it comes to like your marketing. And the reason I say this is you have to learn enough things to pay attention to in order to really tell if something is working or not. Um, an example is we had a campaign once where we were running YouTube ads to grow the artist's YouTube account. And they, you know, we get through the campaign, we're trying stuff. Uh, they haven't really gotten much engagement on the video. They haven't really gained many subscribers. You know, it's looking like a, like an L of a campaign. And we're like, okay. oh man, you know, it's, it's gonna be one of those ones we have to tell them like, yo man, it just didn't work. You know, this is what I have to figure out. And for whatever reason, we asked the artists for their Apple analytics. Like, yo, can we see your Apple analytics? And we checked it out. And like during the duration of that, they had maybe gotten about like 1800 shaz uh, Shazams. So we're like, damn, okay. So the people for whatever reason weren't going to YouTube, they were hopping out the ad and then going to his Apple account. You know what I'm saying? Like Shazam and his song going to his Apple music. So it's like, it didn't, it didn't work in the space that we wanted to work in, but it worked somewhere. You know, it wasn't a complete duh. It just, it just it wasn't a place that we weren't paying attention to at first. So I try to get them to think of it and artists as well, just to see in like the big picture, like go look at everything, go, uh, go look your name up on Twitter and see if people are tweeting, tweeting about you. Go look, go look through TikTok and see if people have been making videos around your sound. You know what I'm saying? Go, uh, go to YouTube and, See if like, you know, weird like audio channels have been uploading your music as audio on it or something. Or people have been commenting on your videos or, right. or stuff like that, you know? Cause that'll like really let you know, I think. Like that's the big the big picture, you know? And then of course you have the individual metrics on different platforms you're looking at, post engagement, likes, views, you know, sure. like audience retention, that, that micro stuff. But I think the bigger picture is like looking at everything. Like we try to look at everything. Like uh, at the very least, the, the DSP analytics, and whatever social media platform analytics, and then just like engagement on that stuff. That's like mm -hmm. the baseline. Cause that'll let you know, that'll let you know if everything you're doing is working. If you see your streams going up and your sales going up and you get some subscribers here and you get some Instagram followers and people are talking about you and stuff like you, that's a good sign, you know? <laughs> right. um, Cause that shows that people are organically spreading your music because they like it. And that's the most important thing for marketing is if, if all the dollar, if all the push has to come from 
the the marketing spin, which it will in the beginning because you're pushing yourself to people that 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 don't know you. But long term, if you're not seeing kind of like um like some kind of like long tail effect from it, then something needs to be work, reworked in the game plan. Like I, I believe in uh depending on how long we're running certain campaigns for artists, kind of having like a hard reset month at some point where we just stop doing stuff and let's just gauge it out and see like what is going on organically. You know, like we just stop running ads stop paying influencers, stop doing all this stuff. Like what do they, what do they uh, drop down to? And they go from 200,000 monthly listeners to 20,000 monthly listeners. Like, dang, okay. All this was from the, the and they start, oh, let's say they started 18,000. It's like, man, okay. You know what I'm saying? Something wasn't done right here. Like it should, it shouldn't have been like that, but if they go up to a hundred thousand, they drop down to like, you know, I don't know, 35,000. And, but they started at like, uh, like, 1500 or 10,000 or something, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, like there's a, a significant enough increase here to where, or we, we're seeing engagement on enough stuff to where it's like, okay, this is like really working. And some of that stuff takes time, you know? Um, but I think just training yourself to look for all that stuff just to help long-term because you're gonna, you're, sometimes you will, you will stop yourself from doing things that work because it didn't work where you wanted it to work, you know? Uh, so like I said, with that campaign, if we had, I mean, we did stop it, so, but, uh, we were trying to get the artist to continue running it, but he really wanted the YouTube grow from it. So it was like, we understand that in the, in the bigger picture, his goal, but it's like in the grand scheme of growing him somewhere, it worked. He got 1,800 people over to his uh, his Apple Music account. You know, they Shazammed the song and went there and listened to it. Like, it was crazy. Um, and we've seen things trickle over in, in, in different ways. We've had ads where artists wanted to grow their Instagram account, but everyone was going to Spotify, you know, or everyone was going to these or everyone was going to YouTube and or it would always be the same thing. Like, yo, it may not be working where you wanted to work, but I mean, people are going somewhere and kind of sticking around you, you know, now you at least have people there that you can kind of try to pull to the other things that you, that you care about. You know, if you care more about Spotify and they're following you instead, go live and tell them, yo, go to my Spotify account. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I go to the DSP, you uh, just have to kind of hope they like your music enough to <laughs> come find you on other stuff, you know, but, that's still a quality control thing with the or a content thing. Like, is there enough there for them to make them go like, yo, let me go look into this guy. Like, I like what's going on. Um, so yeah, man, I don't know. I, th I, think, I think that's great, man. Everything yeah. you're saying is like, yeah, it's fire. I, I, I'm curious too. Um, so like, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I'm really curious about artist goals and we'll make this the last topic, but like artist goals, like my goals have changed a lot. You know, I used okay. to be really big on, followers like what if i don't really care about followers what if like the only metric i care about is customers like that's the main thing not the only the most important for me that's kind of the way i feel i could be wrong i feel i'm like dude i only care about like having customers because those are the people that are the warmest hottest audience and people on my email list so like that's why i had to ask you about streamlining things because like artists are like i want all these followers it's like, yeah. I don't care that much about that. I care more about like actually being able to communicate with people somewhere where I can control the dialogue. I can't control that on Instagram. Instagram could just snap their fingers, change the algorithm. Now I can't talk to people the same or I can't talk to the amount of people the same. So like, okay. I don't care about stuff like that. That's kind of why I don't care as much about Spotify. It's the same thing. It's just like, I can't build on these platforms. I'm trying to build my infrastructure. Like how, again, Ryan Leslie, back to him, doesn't have like, he doesn't go platinum, but he has 40,000 customers. And it's like, if you sell 40,000 records in the industry, you'd be taken as a joke. But if he does it, it's not because he actually keeps it. So my whole mindset is on that. Yeah. So like for me, like I'm not trying to build followers. I'm trying to build customers and an email list. What do you, what do you have in terms of like in that regard? What would you say? I mean, it, it goes back to your goals, you know, like kind of what do you want to see? How do you want your artist career to go? Um, Cause there's, there's credence to even some of the things that people kind of put down about music of like the vanity stuff, but the vanity matches are sometimes what gets you like the brand deals or something like that, you know, gotcha, uh, like man. other, other facets of maybe where you want to build your artist career out. But if you don't give a fuck about that, then yeah, like just build your customer. But I think the customer base and just the general fan base is enough of a start, you know? Right. So there's work that you have to do to build it just a general fan base and people who are aware of you. And there's work to turn those people into customers. Like that, in my opinion, is the base of where every artist should start. Because you're right. If you're an artist that never gets on Billboard, you know what I'm saying, never charts, never whatever, but you have 40,000, 100,000, however many people there were, even if it's like 8,000 people, you know what I'm saying? I've seen artists make like 
uh, college degree amounts of money <laughs> off of just a small fan base, you know? And I think that should be the first goal of every artist is just to start there. Even if, even if the things, uh, let's say you want the other stuff, even if you want that, start there because that'll get you to where you want, what you want to do. Um, so what's the strategy for that? Like, what do we build? Like, let's say it like from A to Z, like, let's say that's where we're trying to start. Do you mm. sell an album? Do you make a t-shirt sell it? Do you make your a planner, a PlayStation controller? And then what, like, what does that look like for, for somebody like, cause that dude, cause I'm kind of in this place where mm. I, I was, I, I'm a mainly an artist. Right. And like this year, I like put the artist thing away. COVID hit and I was like, oh fuck, like we can't do concerts. I kind of freaked and I was like, let me do the music producer business. So I started building that. And I, you know, I built a little email list, saw some revenue, saw some profit, did coaching, this, that, and the third. And then I was like, bro, I could be totally wrong. We'll see when I'm dead if I was right or wrong. But I was just like, that's not who I want to serve at all. And that's not even how I want to serve. Like I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy it. And so I was like, bro, go back to being an artist. Like, that's what you want. Take all this shit you learn and be an artist. So I'm kind of in this almost factory reset mode for me where I, I always feel like, all right, ground zero. Like I always have that ground zero attitude. So let's say I'm at ground zero and I'm like, all right, let's start fresh. You know, this year, I don't need to make a million bucks this year. I don't even need to make six figures this year, but like 2021, I need to see customers. Like I have to, I want to build, like you said, that guy has 8,000 people. Like yeah. Like let's, I want to start building something like that. What is the year long strategy or the six month or like, where do I at least get started in the first three months for me to just like build out like an actual business? You know what I mean? What's the process? So I would say first do an audience size assessment, you know, like, like okay. sit down, look at all the ads you've ran um, look at, look at, uh, traffic on certain platforms that, you know, you can retarget through like your Instagram account, your YouTube account, stuff like that. See like what the general audience size is first. I think you start there. Okay. Um, I would say from there, I think the first two things that, that have to be figured out is like, what are going to be the things that you want to monetize around? And you want to build a customer base around um, and then making sure you can realistically, realistically maintain them and keep them up. So if merch is the thing you're going to build around, you start looking into, are you going to be able to afford to produce, just to produce at the volume that you think like you could keep it up or like, could you get a limited amount to, to just test it out? What's this going to cost all that stuff, you know? Um, or if you want to build around, you know, let's say your goal for the next years to build out Patreon subscribers, like, you know, how many of you want to get, what do you think that may cost as far as do you have something like a cost per lead or a cost for something to give you a baseline number to work around? Like what is, what, what might that look like for you? Can you afford to run that? And are you willing to lose whatever, you know what I'm saying? You may have to put into it to do it. If all that is cool, like you're, you're at a good place where you're cool, whatever that number looks like and that works for you. Or if it doesn't, you know, find something in there that you can build around. Um, you know, maybe you're not going to do t-shirts and hats this year. You're just going to do stickers, you know? So I want to sell, 500 stickers this year, you know, mm -hmm. what, what is that going to cost you? Uh, and then are you going to be able to get that and make it happen? Um, and then from there, man, I think I'm a big believer in building around the music and the content and the personality first before trying to like straight monetize, because you have to build like a rapport with people. The customer relationship is, is just like, it's like dating. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not getting married with someone that you just, that you just met. Maybe it's just somebody, some people out there have, but most people aren't, you know? So yeah. like, what does that look like in between that time of when you're building from A to Z, you know, like how are you getting them to, to even move along the process from A to Z? So I, I think that the, in the perfect world, um, you figure out that system of what you're going to monetize around, how much it's going to cost you. What does that look like as far as um, like what you have to actually put together and get built out. So like we said, merch, getting the merch made, live stream concerts, what is your production cost going to be? What is your, your cost to use a certain software going to be like all this stuff? Like what is that going to cost you to make whatever you want to build around happen? Um, next is build attention around you in general. Figure out that now you have to figure out the content strategy. What are you going to do to just build yourself up as an artist and make people care enough about you to where maybe you can convince some of them to spend money on you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so then mapping it out. All right, I'm going to 
post this amount of times on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have this amount of ads, um, you know, running around myself. So I guess I should say content and marketing plan. What's your content and marketing plan gonna look like? Pretty much, like what is your your ad spend going to be? You know, how many times are you gonna be posting on things? What does that that build out look like for you? Um, and then last is just like what is that kind of like funnel gonna look like for you? Like who's gonna build it out for you? Who's gonna manage it? Are you gonna manage it? Like are you, are you gonna use your super phone and send out the text to, to people about the merch drop or do you need like your homie to do it? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you going to pay your friend to do it? You know, right. are you going to just, you know, like what, is, what does that look like for you? Like where are you at in your system? Figure all that stuff out and then see how much of it you can get done. And the way I look at it is at least doing that will let you kind of know like what the picture is going to look like, like what the big picture for at least the goal that you have is going to look like. Right. And then, just just start, you know what I'm saying? Worst thing that happens is you shot for 800 and you got 500, you know? Because right. um, the, the rest of it, I can't tell you. Like, the rest of it is going to be just, like, testing, te really testing the content out and testing out how you push people over to the point of, like, trying to buy, like, whether it's through ads or just texting your fans or just telling them you're live, like, yo, I got merch. You know what I'm saying? Go buy it. Um, and just seeing what works and just tweaking that throughout the year. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I just think, like, you have to know what you have to work with to do what you want to do. And then you have to know how you're going to keep yourself visible. You know, those are the two basic things you have to start with as an artist. Because those are the two most important things in, in making money. Can you afford to maintain the things that want to make money the way you want to make money? And are you bringing in people that care enough about the thing you're trying to make money off of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why, I, that's why I think it should start, man. Because that's really, that applies to artists of any level. Like, you're an artist with you know, you have a thousand dollars to spend for the year. You got a hundred thousand. Like you have to, that, everyone has to figure that game out the same way. You know what I'm saying? Um, or what it's going to look like for them. And I think that the artists that get good at that, or at least find people that help them, that can be good at that for them, or, or you know, help them be good at it. Uh, those are the ones that win the most because they start to see like what the big picture looks like, broken down into like little stuff. And like, okay, these are like, okay, dang, it's going to cost me. X amount of dollars to make this idea happen. Okay, cool. But if I try to make this idea happen, it only cost me two thousand dollars. Let me start there first and get through that first, and then use that to build towards the other stuff. I think those are the ones that that win long term because they at least start to understand like what what comes with building the business of being an artist. And then from that point, it's just time. You know, just grinding it out, putting it together, tweaking it. Like any business, like every business is going through the same problems. Like they're putting the product out and figuring it out as people take it in because it's taking in you know real real consumer uh, data like and they're figuring out what needs to be tweaked so they can optimize it and make it a better product you know artists have to kind of view it the same way like what am i trying to sell around myself or monetize around myself what am i doing like am i what am i doing and trying to give me the best roi there how can i maximize it out or optimize it out or maintain it in a way that i can afford and then what does that look like for me long term you know so if i can spend you see that you know i i, I know that i get the best I don't know. I get majority of my leads for my merch through my email marketing. It's like, okay, so how much money do you have to spend to build out your email list? You know, so if it's costing you five dollars a lead or something like that, you know, five dollars a let's just say five dollars a sign up for your email list. That's kind of hot, but let's just say that's what it is. Uh, you know, like okay, cool. If I want five thousand people on this email list, now I'm going to spend roughly five thousand dollars this year. You know what I'm saying? You know, but if I feel like I can get, I don't know, seventy five of those people to buy a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe even more than that. I feel like they're engaged with me enough. I, I see what they're liking. I, or at least I have people to ask what they like for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, then, then you just like plan around that, you know, and just figure out how to make it better. But I think just yeah. just figuring those first two steps out first are, are, are the majority, are, are the bigger part of the game. You know, how are you going to make it happen? How much is it going to cost to make it happen? And what do you have to do to bring people in that care about what you're trying to make happen? Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> That's fire. I wrote, I mean, I don't know if you could see, I was viciously typing like everything <laughs> you were just fucking saying. Uh, like I wrote it all down. It's great. I mean, dude, basically you just gave me like a two, a 10 step system. You gave not me, my audience, me and my audience, like everyone listening to this, you just got, and I'm going to quick, I'll quick re I'll go through it again right now. So we review, we just okay. went through a 10 step system on like, like how to build out your music business. Like it's pretty sick what we just did. And you came up with um, uh, the two most important things. So I'll just go over it one more time. Like basically step one, 
well, it's not really step one. It's the first thing is build around the music, the content and the artist all around first before merch. Right. Yeah. Then number two, okay, now we got to do an audience size assessment. See how big your audience size is across all your platforms. Yep. Uh, three. Um, and like tra I wrote traffic on all platforms you can retarget. Like I actually forgot what that even is. You said it and uh, I forgot it. Well, pretty much in the audience thing, like, like all right. including the traffic you can retarget in that. So if you have 100,000 people in an ad set, then include it in your audience size, you know? Got it. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Next number. I, I wrote number four. What are your goals? Maybe that comes before all of that, but I just put, what are your goals? Five. What are the things you want to build a customer base around? And I put in parentheses, your products, like what is the product that you want to build around? Is that what you meant by that? Or is there, is there, was that also a branding thing? Yeah. I mean, so like really what thing are you trying to monetize around this, that, that you want to build around? So is it selling merch? Is it doing live stream experiences or, or some type of digital experience? Do you want to build around a Patreon account? You know, do you want to get more donations on your, your, your Twitch account? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is, what are you building towards? Like what's the monetizing thing you're building towards? Okay. Cause that's, you're figuring out what you need to optimize for pretty much. And this whole process is like, this is the thing I need to, to make sure that what, what I'm, what I'm spending my money on is giving me the best return for it. So if you right. care the most about, Patreon subscribers, but you're getting a bunch of YouTube subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Right, um, doing something wrong. Yeah, you know exactly. It. Right. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, number six, can you scale that type of product? Like, is that something that you can even, you know, do? Handle. Yeah. yeah. Handle. Do uh, that, really. Yeah. Number seven, what's your content marketing plan? Number eight, what's your ad spend budget? Number nine, what's your funnel going to look like? And then number ten. How, how are you going to manage those systems or who is going to manage those systems for you? And then you said, basically the rest comes down to testing and seeing what works and tweaking it. Yeah, exactly. That point you just, that's, yeah, you just, now you, you just said it. I just wanted to repeat it just to make sure everyone kind of got, cause it was very, and then you said the two most important things, can you afford to maintain the products, buying them, shipping, handling, all that fulfillment. And then number two is, are you bringing in people who are going to care about what you're offering? That's actually a big one. Because like, for example, I had like a couple of TikTok videos blow up, but it had nothing to do with my music. I just got lucky. Yeah. It was, I don't even remember. Random shit. So I got an influx of followers, but like, I don't think they care about my music. Like, actually, yeah. I'm pretty certain they don't because they had nothing. And I just got lucky. I was just like, cool, you yeah. know. So that, that's part of, um, you know, that's kind of part of it. Um, man, I, and like, dude, this has been like, you have, I wish I could. Well, I don't, I'm not going like, dude, I just fucking took a page of notes. Like I never take notes during podcasts. Usually I just don't need to. But for this one, I took hella notes uh, for anyone listening to this. Yeah, like I, I think anyone listening to this right now or watching this on YouTube, you should go back again and take notes. Cause I didn't say at the beginning to take notes. Cause I just kind of wasn't expecting to. I, mean, I might need to go back and take notes, man. Like, especially, I, yeah, I, might, I might have to go back and take notes, man. No, like, that's, that's real <laughs> shit. I, I could even... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll email them to you actually. Like just, I'll just copy paste them, but yeah, like this is real ass shit. I mean, dude, you could fucking, we'll end it here. Like you could fucking make an ebook out of all those 10 steps. Like you for sure could make an ebook of like 10 steps to build a music business or whatever. And just yeah. boom, all that shit you just said, boom, there it is. <laughs> like 10 pages, yeah. 10 steps. Like, yeah. yeah. That's true, man. I mean, we've been talking about like getting a lot more in that space, man. It's just that like, you know, you want to make sure you have the stuff around the business first before, you know, you can comfortably talk about every part of the process before you put out the parts of the process. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, and I, I can just say that's, that's kind of the thing that me and Sean have been doing recently, just taking the business stuff a lot more seriously, seeing what that looks like, you know, so we can relate the information properly to people that we relate it to. But as far as like getting started on like a, wherever level you feel like you're at and trying to monetize, like that, that really is the, the game plan. You know, I, I've never like stepped it out like that, but that's, that is the game plan. You know, I'm, I'm very linear. I'm like, dude, cause I'm not like, dude, to my fucking brain, we're all over the place. Like artists, like, dude, you can see I'm a high energy motherfucker. So like my mind's all over the place. If I don't see that shit yeah. written out, I'm going to be like, dude, I don't fucking know. I have no idea how to do it. Like if there's not a very simple plan, I can't do it. So I'm all about, like if I hear information from people like you, I'm like, all right, I got to write this down and I really got to see it and step it out. Um, yeah, I guess I'm more of like a visual learner. Like I got to do it kind of guy too. So I just thought for anyone yeah. listening to this, go fucking take notes on this, you know? So 
Yeah, man. I, I, I don't want to take up much more of your time. You gave me over an hour. You gave the audience over an hour. Where can people find you? Where can people get in contact with you and Contra Brand Agency and what you guys are doing? Yeah, man. So just tap in with me on Instagram at Corey DeSavier, K-O-H-R-E-Y-D-A-S-A-V-I-O-R. You know, should it be somewhere beneath the description, you know, under the video. Uh, so just, just start by following me there, you know. All the information is there. Uh, if you want to try to work with the agency, it's countrybrand.agency. Um, we have like a, a cool little form on the website. You just fill it out. And if we feel like we can make something happen, then we'll reach back out, you know. If, if not, then, you know. Let's, let's try next time, you know, let's try, let's, uh, let's, let's try to make something happen next time or, or find something that works. But yeah, I mean, I'll just tell people to tap in with me on Instagram first. That's probably the, the, the place I'm the most active. Yeah. Um, I would also argue that your TikTok is very good. Like I've seen your TikToks pop up and I follow you, but your TikTok is fire. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm, I'm still figuring TikTok out. So, you know, I, yeah, follow me on TikTok. I get Cody Saver, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm still figuring TikTok out, but yeah, man. I, it's, and that's been an interesting experience in itself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think you're doing great on there. I mean, I saw you pop up on the For You page. I already knew you because of YouTube. And I was like, oh, I know this guy. And then actually, that's kind of what prompted me to even invite you because I saw you there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to get this dude on the pod. So, um, yeah, your, your, your TikTok is you're doing really well with that. Like, you're giving good tips. Like, it's very helpful. It's all true. Yeah, I always like seeing that stuff. So thank you, man, so much for getting on the pod, bro. I, I like, okay, I, I knew this was going to be good. I just, cause of based off what you and Sean talk about with paid ads, you really talk about building a business and building things the right way. So, um, yeah, man. And if you're somebody listening to this or watching this, don't be selfish, share this with somebody. I'm sure that you have a friend who would get some kind of value out of this episode. I know I got major value out of this. So share this shit, man, get the, get the, get everything popping. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you guys all again tomorrow.